All right, let's go with the second video in the eight-part video series about the starter decks, the Defenders of Gondor. So let's take a look at these heroes. We got a leadership hero. It's Prince Imrahil, 11 threat. Two, three, two, four. That's a good stat line. Gondor Noble. Response, after a character leaves play, ready Prince Imrahil. Limit once per round. Just an absolutely excellent ability. I use this Prince Imrahil all the time. Especially in a multiplayer game, there's always characters coming and going. So you can quest of him, and then he pops back up. You can defend of him, and then maybe he'll pop back up just once per round. But there's always opportunities to use at least two of his stats. So he's wonderful. Boromir is also here, 11 threat. Leadership, 1, 3, 2, 5. Gondor, warrior, noble. While Boromir has at least one resource in his resource pool, Gondor allies get plus one attack. So he is excellent at leading the Gondor army. The Gondor trait is all about building up an ally swarm, and Boromir boosts all of them. And that is table-wide, so everybody's Gondor allies gets the boost if he has a resource in his resource pool. We also have Tactics Mablung, 10 threat, 2, 2, 2, 4. Gondor Ranger, response, after you engage an enemy, add one resource to Mablung's resource pool, limit once per phase so there are quite a few quests where you engage enemies in lots of different phases and so he would get a resource each phase that you engage an enemy now if you engage an enemy with optional engagement and then you engage one through regular engagement in the same round you only get one resource because they both engaged you during the same phase i love mablung i always include him in decks and when i go to conventions i bring him as just a hero to slot into a deck. If I have a Tactics Hero and somebody else has the same Tactics Hero, I can say, all right, I'll just use Mablung instead. The downside of having three really good heroes like this, starting threat of 32. That's dangerous. That is a little high. So I'm not going to have any cards in my opening hand. I'm going to do a true opening hand here. All the cards that I want to talk about don't have specific timing structures. The other decks have a couple cards that I wanted to make sure I could show you how the timing works. These are all pretty straightforward, so I just want to talk about a couple here. So we're going to start out with the Citadel Custodian. So he costs five, but he gets a discount of one for every Gondor ally in play. And it doesn't say Gondor ally you control, it's table-wide. So when you go to play the Citadel Custodian, if you're playing with other people or playing multi-handed, all the Gondor allies currently in play help discount the cost of the Citadel Custodian. We also have this card, the Heir of Mardil. The Heir of Mardil says whenever the attached hero gains a resource, ready the attached hero. And gaining a resource is the addition of a resource to that hero's resource pool. So it doesn't matter if it got moved there with like an Aaron Rider scooting the resource over. It doesn't matter. Uh, Steward of Gondor gains your resources. As long as a resource has entered that hero's resource pool, you get to trigger the Heir of Mardil. And then the final card I wanted to talk about here is Pillars of the Kings, and it says, Action, set your threat to 40. And I just wanted to remind you that if you wanted to do this during the refresh phase, you have to raise your threat, and then the action window opens up. So if you go into the refresh phase with a threat of 49, you would actually hit 50 before you have a chance to play this card. You actually have to play this card before the refresh phase if your threat is 49 and you're about to lose. So the action window is after you raised your threat. And that's all I wanted to mention about any of these Gondor cards. The rest are pretty straightforward. And let's see how well this deck does against Passage Through Mirkwood. Okay, let's see what I get in my opening hand. Visionary Leadership, Steward of Gondor would be great. Also, I just want to get a bunch of allies in play. So let's see what happens. Oh, okay, we got the Custodian. Uh, Envoy of Pelagir is a great ally. She only really costs one. There's another nice cheap ally that helps you find more allies. We got a Shield. Wonderful. Uh, a second Custodian. Oh, okay, and the Captain of Gondor, which is a stat-boosting card. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's keep it. I didn't get Steward. I didn't get Visionary Leadership. Um, but I think this quest doesn't really need them as much, and I should be able to start building towards the point where I can get these custodians in for basically free, and with three hit points, and questing for one, maybe attacking for one with Boromir's resource. Uh, yeah, this is fine. It's fine. It's not great, but it's not horrible either. I'm just glad to get allies in play. Okay, we're up against three threat. I'm going to be using the Ring of Bower here as my 
player willpower tracker. Everyone gets a resource and we get a behind strong walls. Okay, that's a nice card to ready a defending Gondor character. And it's a tactics resource to pay for it. And Mablung will always get a tactics resource when we engage an enemy. Let's play the Gondorian shield. It gives plus two defense to a Gondor hero. And I'm going to put this on Boromir because Boromir has the least amount of willpower, so he's most likely going to be ready when we go into the combat phase. Now let's play the Envoy of Pelagir. She costs two, but then after she enters play, you get to add a resource to a Gondor or Noble hero's resource pool. So you spend two resources, and then you put one right back. So let's put that on Boromir. So we have one ally in play. And I think we're going to call it good. So let's go questing. These three characters are going to quest for five. We're up against three. I can't remember if I shuffled the encounter deck, so let's give that a quick shuffle. And I don't care if I make progress this first turn. I'm just trying to build up a board state. All right, what do we reveal? It's a one threat black forest bats. When revealed, each player must choose one character currently committed to the quest and remove them from the quest. That character cannot ready. So let's remove the envoy. So she was only one willpower. And we added one threat, so it's a push. We don't make any progress, which means we did not quest successfully. If you ever have a card that asks you if you quested successfully, if you quest even, you're not questing successfully. We traveled to the old forest road that readied Mablung, and now we're going to engage both enemies. It doesn't matter if they were optionally engaged, came down regularly, he gets one resource, and then it doesn't matter if we optionally engaged or had the spider come down through normal engagements, it gets plus one attack. So let's have Boromir defend. He's defending for four. There's no shadow, so I take no damage. And then I'm going to take this one undefended. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay, nothing. So took a little risk there, but I wanted to make sure I had enough characters ready to actually kill something. Let's put the one damage on Immerhill. And then Mablung can swing for two, and that's enough to kill the bats. So I wanted to try to kill at least one of these two enemies. And yeah, okay, let's go into the next round. So 33 threat. There's not a lot of threat reduction in this deck, and there's not a lot of card draw. So I think you're going to be top decking a lot, just grabbing the top card off your deck. And we get the Pelagir ship captain. Okay, he's pretty cool. When he enters play, you get to scoot a resource somewhere. So I'm trying to get more allies in play. So let's play the Soldier of Gondor. Nice stat line, cost two, two hit points. And then after he enters play, you get to search your top five cards for a Gondor ally and add it to your hand. But if your threat was 40 or higher, you get to add any Gondor allies in your top five to your hand. All right, so let's take a peek here at my top five cards. And let's see if we have a good Gondor ally to add. This is an event. Uh, there's my visionary leadership. There's a good Gondor ally. He's a good defender, another defender and foe hammer okay we have two choices both tactics i think we're going to go with the defender of ramas he's most likely to live even though he only has one hit point um i feel like we can get multiple uses out of him versus the gundorian spearman which only has one defense and one hit point we shuffled the other cards back into the deck and then we're going to continue with the planning phase so i think i will spend the two resources that I have on Mablung to put this Defender of Ramas in. He's a Gondor ally, and he's a Defender. So it's always good to get another Defender on the table, and now we have three Gondor allies in play. All right, I have nothing else in my hand that I can play or I want to play at this time, so we will go to the quest phase. I like that these Gondor allies have two hit points. It keeps me safe from a Necromancer's reach, killing them. So we'll send those for two and Mablung, and that's four against nothing. That's fine. I'm in no hurry here. So let's see what we get. Not the ah! Oh, okay. It's the hero killer. So if we engage that, we have to deal five damage to a hero we control. That'll kill any of my heroes. And with this deck having kind of like the let's get to 40 so everything gets better, uh, that just made getting to 40 a death sentence for a hero. So that's pretty dangerous. We're not going to engage that. We did clear the active location. We're getting attacked for two. So I'm going to have the Defender of Ramas defend. And there is a shadow. Attacking enemy gets plus one, plus three if undefended. Okay. Defender of Ramas handles that no problem. And then we can swing back for enough to kill the spider. 
So all in all, we're, we're doing fine. Uh, we're at 34, so I just got to win before we hit 40. Or I just have to assume I'm going to lose a hero once we hit 40. If I could draw a Gandalf, I could kill that thing. Uh, another foe hammer. You know, well, I didn't draw a foe hammer yet. It was in those top five. The thing with foe hammer in this build, there's only like two or three weapons in this deck. I think there's three. I usually don't play foe hammer unless I have seven weapons. So it, it's going to be pretty hard to trigger foe hammer with this deck. Okay, I'm going to play the Envoy of Pelagir. And so he costs two, and then you can slide a resource somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to slide a resource around, but I am going to play this Citadel Custodian at a discount of four. So he only costs one resource, and now I can play the second Citadel Custodian for free because I control five Gondor allies. So we have a nice ally swarm going here. They're all Gondor. So any cards that you have that boost Gondor characters are extremely good with this build. And I have the Captain of Gondor attached to a warrior hero. After you optionally engage an enemy, give that hero plus one attack and defense. Sure, let's play it. Mainly because I know there's shadows that make you discard attachments, and I'd rather discard that than the Gondorian shield if I have to do that. Okay, the Citadel Custodians have three hit points, so they're questing for one each, and these two Gondor allies also have two hit points, and so does the Envoy Pelagir. So they're all questing together for five, and if I add Mablung and Prince Imrahil, we are questing for a total of nine against one. No reason to sit around when we're worried about hitting 40. Oh, hello, mm -hmm. Necromancer's Reach. All right, so one damage to all questing, actually one damage to all exhausted characters. So they all have two hit points, so nobody dies, but now the next necromancer's reach could kill some of these little allies so uh things just got a little dangerous but we added no threat so that's good so we are going to make our eight progress and advance to the next stage which just needs two progress and then we advance to a random stage three once we clear it i am not engaging the hummer horns that's a suicide mission so we'll go into the next round all right lots of red on the table Got my resources, we draw another Pelagir ship captain, so we'll just put him right into play. And I'm not gonna slide a resource anywhere after I pay for him. So two resources there. I mean, I could give it to Boromir, but uh, I'm not too worried about boosting anybody's attack at this moment. All right, well, I'm worried about Necromancer's Reach, so I'm only questing with characters that won't die if we reveal it. Actually, Emerhill has a lot of damage. Let's just send Mablung. So we will send five against one. We need to make two progress. And the card we reveal is a two-threat enchanted stream. When it's active, we can't draw cards. Okay, we make two progress, so we're good there. Now we advance to random stage three. Once again, I'm going to choose the harder of the two, so let's get Ungoliant Spawn, and we have to kill Ungoliant Spawn. So I'm going to search for her, and yeah, we're going to have to engage it. I mean, that's the thing with this Gondor deck. High threat, you're not sneaking around. You're definitely... Letting all the enemies know you're there. So Ungoliant Spawn has now entered play. And she's going to come and get me. So because I engage an enemy, Mablung gets a resource. All right. Uh, let's see. What do I want to do here? So she's attacking for five. I actually have a way that I could survive this attack without taking any damage. So by optionally engaging... Boromir is defending for five, but I also have an event that would boost the defender of Ramas's defense by one, so he would be defending by five. Okay, a couple options, and there's a third option. I take it undefended, let Mablung die, and then I have enough attack power with all my ready characters just to kill it. So, I mean, let's just do that. So, yeah, undefended. And the attack goes through, there's no shadow, 5 damage on Mablung, he's dead. And then everybody can swing back. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, dead. Okay, um, that was easy. Let's say I don't want to lose a hero, and instead I'll defend with Boromir, so he takes no damage. And then we can hit back for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. Oh man, If actually if I had moved that resource over with the Pelagir ship captain, that would have been 11 and we would have won. I, I was thinking I probably wouldn't advance. I 
I guess I was assuming I was going to reveal at least three threat, and I didn't think I was going to advance that round. So, yeah, I probably should have kicked a resource over to Boromir. Okay, well, we piled on the damage, and now we're going to go into the next round. So there we go. There's the resources. The card we draw is <laughs> the Squire of the Citadel, everyone's favorite chump. So when he... Uh, leaves play, you get to add a resource to a Gondor hero's resource pool. All right, so he's in play, and now we're going to go questing. I'm only up against three. I don't need to make any progress, and I'm going to send characters that won't die if we get Necromancer's Reach again. And, uh, you know, this deck, it's not as powerful as the Dwarves or the Sylvans. It's pretty straightforward. I think you need to add some cards to it from the core set to make it better. So when we play this one again and I do a little deck building, uh, I think we're going to make it really shine. So right now, let's have six and holy cow, it is Necromancer's Reach. Okay, so there's a lot of damage going on the table. So the Citadel Custodians, they're still okay. And then uh, Imrahil is one hit point away. And so is, oh no, Mablung has two damage. Two hit points left. We quest successfully, which doesn't matter. And now all we got to do is kill Ungoliant Spawn. So obviously not engaging the Hummerhorns. We're getting attacked for five. Let's use Defender of Ramas. We're going to spend a Tactics Resource to give him plus one defense to the end of the phase and ready him. So he's defending for five. And he's ready. And we flip over the Shadow and... Oh, there is a Shadow. Uh, defending player must choose and discard an attachment he control. Ah, see? That's why the Captain of Gondor is uh, pretty good. It's not as good as the shield, but having it in play gives me the option to get rid of it instead of the shield. And then we just need to do some damage, and Boromir this time has a resource in his resource pool. So each of these Gondor allies have an extra attack power. And Visionary Leadership, if I ever got that on Boromir, they'd also be questing for an additional willpower. Okay, that, that was an easy win. I mean, we won twice. Uh, let's see. We're pretty short on time. <laughs> let's just do another planning phase, the first couple rounds of the quest, just to kind of see what kind of opening turns we get. I feel like this deck, you're either going to smash the quest or you're going to struggle. It all depends on how fast you get your board state built. And with not a lot of card draw, you're kind of really dependent on your opening hand. Wow, lots of cheap allies. Holy cow. And we got the Heir of Mardil. Okay, so no steward again, but I got three allies with an average cost of like 1.75. So yeah, we'll keep that because we'll be able to get quite a few allies in play pretty quick. Ooh, okay, Valiant Sacrifice. After ally leaves play, draw two cards. That's nice. Okay, what can we do here? Uh, we can spend two resources to put the Pelagir ship captain into play. And then I'm going to slide a resource over to Boromir. So now it's leadership. And then we will spend his resource for the Squire of the Citadel. So we have a nice little chump. And yeah, two allies in on turn one. Not bad. All right, let's go questing. Let's see what happens when we quest. So one, two, three, four, five. Five against three. And we get a two threat great forest web you have to exhaust a hero to travel there so it's a push we make new progress we can travel to the old forest road i will ready mablung let's engage the spider who will be attacking for three mablung gets the resource and yeah i'm just gonna jump so the squire jumps in front of it he's dead and then that lets me put a resource in boromir's resource pool and I forgot I had this Valiant Sacrifice, so these two cards actually work together because it's the exact same trigger when an ally leaves play. So the Squire of the Citadel leaves play, you can decide to trigger his response first, get the resource, and then you can trigger Valiant Sacrifice and spend that resource to draw two cards. This works because it's the same trigger for both responses, so you as the player get to decide which to trigger first. And then Mablung and Boromir have enough attack to take down the spider. So having big heroes, actually Imrahil readied as well. So having these big heroes, being able to kill enemies the same round you engage them is uh, really powerful. And okay, we'll just do one more turn here just to see what the board state looks like. Okay, cool. Gondorian Spearman. Nice Gondor ally. 
I like this card. So let's play the Soldier of Gondor just to see what else we can find. So two resources for him. We're going to look at the top five. Grab a Gondor ally out of him. Uh, okay, we got one. Defender of Ramas. So there we go. And then I'll either play the Defender of Ramas or the Gondorian Spearman. Let's play the Defender of Ramas again. I like I like him. I like the four defense. Boromir has a resource, and that boosts all the attack of the Gondor allies. But I want to play an Aaron Rider. So an Aaron Rider costs one, and you exhaust it to move resources around. So that's another way to get resources into Boromir's resource pool. So there we go. Turn two. I have four allies in play. That seems pretty good. Let's just do one more, since we're only at 20 minutes, let's just do one more opening turn and just see what kind of opening turn we get and maybe maybe we'll get a, a hand we don't like because so far I've just kept the hands that I grab. Okay, we got Gandalf. Uh, there's my shield, that's nice. Defender of Ramas, uh, Foe Hammer, another Gandalf, and Gondorian Spearman. Uh, this hand sucks. This is no good. I can't even afford an ally on turn one. So there you go. There, There's a hand you wouldn't want to keep. That was no good. So let's take a mulligan and see if we get something better. All right, Envoy Pelagir. That's great. There we go. Uh, the Arrow Mardil. Another behind strong walls. Oh, there's your sword. Okay, plus one, plus two if you're above 40. A feint and an Aaron Rider. Yeah, see, this that'd be a great hand. So, all right, this Gondor deck, it's okay. I think it is probably going to struggle a little bit if you don't get a good opening hand and with no healing, a lack of card draw, and it's pretty hard to drop your threat. You could run into some problems, but I think it's a fun deck. And I really do think with some deck building, you can really make it strong. So it's I'm going to say it has the bones of a very good deck. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Looking forward to making the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.